Okay, season two, here we come. The Kardashians are back on Hulu. We're back in case you missed us. This September. We are starting to talk wedding dresses. Everything gets elevated. I do believe in love. When you love, you know you're alive. You have these feelings. No matter how crazy things are, we're always going to be family. Now hold your crown up. The Kardashians season two, now streaming only on Hulu. Reintroducing the Iced Apple Crisp Oat Milk Macchiato from Starbucks. Now with Starbucks Blonde Espresso and Oat Milk, layered with flavors of apple, cinnamon, and brown sugar, and topped with a spiced apple drizzle. Welcome back, fall. Order today with the Starbucks app. Settling is not an option for me. Everything I desire is already mine. What if you can have it all? <laughs> because every day is for the girls. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of For the Girls. I'm your host, Victoria Alario. And if you listened to last week's episode, then you should have seen this one coming. We are talking about money. I told you guys on my birthday episode that I planned on talking about money, but then I ended up switching over to my journey with alcohol just to get a little bit more personal with you guys for my birthday episode. So today we're going to talk about money mindset, money habits more specifically. I know I talk in detail about a scarcity mindset and, a, and an abundance mindset around money in my original episode, Girls Just Want to Have Funds. I posted that episode a few months back. That's a really good one around money. But this one is more about just like the habits and like the words you say and the things that you do and all of that around money that is really quite common. Now let me just start by saying that I am not a financial advisor. I am not an accountant. In no way, shape or form do I give professional financial advice. However, I am someone who has gone from having a scarcity mindset, who has gone from having no savings account no credit cards because I could not afford to have a savings account. I could not afford to have a credit card to now being someone who has a a majorly abundant mindset around money, has tons of different investments and stocks and savings accounts and all different investments and whatnot with my money as well as making multiple six figures a year. Like I've just been on both ends of the spectrum. And so I can speak from personal experience as well as just from experience from working with so many people as well. Because in working with so many people, I hear the same sorts of excuses or for lack of better terms, I'm going to say excuses, but excuses or mindsets or whatever it is around money of why people can't do things. Oh, I have to wait till this. I have to wait till that. So the first thing that I want to say is something that I see so often. People treat money like it's a band-aid. So people will not spend money until payday, which you might say, well, obviously payday is when you get paid. It's when you spend money. But when you see payday as the only day you can spend money, then you are building a very restricting or constricting, limited energy and mindset with money you have to realize that everything is energy right so energy you can create energy with everything so money is energy so if you have a positive good energy around money where you say okay I'm not going to treat it like a band-aid I know that every time I spend money I will make money back then you will be able to effortlessly spend money on a damn Tuesday just because you feel like it. Whereas when your energy around money is, oh no, I can only spend it on payday, then you are creating an energy and a mindset around money that you can't spend it and make it back. You have to make it first and then spend it. So there's a very different mindset in that regard. For me, I always say, okay, let me spend first and make it back. Whereas somebody who has that scarcity mindset is going to say, well, let me make it first and then see what I can spend. Again, I am not a financial advisor, but opening a credit card was the best thing that I ever did. Now, let me just say, Make sure if you are going to open a credit card that you know how credit cards work. You don't get yourself into debt. You don't get yourself into situations that you can't get out of. Like 
I do know that there are people who get into really bad debt with credit cards, but that's not to say credit cards are bad, okay? A lot of people say, don't ever tell someone that they should get a credit card. Oh, that's the worst thing you could ever do. That is not true. The worst thing you could ever do is open a credit card without knowing how to use it. I never once, since I opened a credit card, my first credit card four years ago, I never once put myself into a position or a situation that I could not pay back. I never once found myself in debt, lowering my credit score or anything of the sort. I have consistently paid all of my credit card bills. I have consistently increased my credit score and... It has been a great experience. I mean, I I opened my first credit card a little less than four years ago, probably in about like April of 2018. And since then, I now have a total of four credit cards. I have two personal credit cards, one for one business and one for another business. And all four of my credit cards are in good standing. My credit score is high. And the one thing that I've never done is open like all the credit cards at the stores, you know, like Bloomingdale's, Victoria's Secret, like all those different credit cards that you could open like that. No, I've never done any of that. I just all have, you know, my my Chase credit cards. And I think people are so scared about opening credit cards because they think it's gonna get out of control. And guess what? It's very much possible. But if you figure out with each card how to use it, what to do with it, like what kind of standing it needs to be in at all times, what kind of perks you have, then you start to really pick up on how to use it. Like one of my personal credit cards is really, really good with like flight points. The other one is really, really good with cash back. So yes, I learned how to use each card in what case. So whether one is better at a restaurant or one is better when booking a flight or a hotel, whatever the case is, I have learned how to use my credit card. So I think that people have this major fear, but when you overcome that fear and you figure it all out, then you will transform into being the type of person who says, I can spend my money when I want and I will always make it back, not the other way around. You don't want to see money as the thing that just comes and goes and is inconsistent in your life. Because when you realize that money is and can be a consistent thing in your life, then you are going to be, you know, you're going to be more generous. You're going to treat yourself better, spoil yourself more. You're going to buy the things that you enjoy. You're going to buy the things that you want. You're not going to have to turn down everything. Of course, there are some things that are out of budget and you have to have self-control, but you will find that you have less and less and less guilt when you buy something that you really want for yourself. You'll find that you won't feel all that bad spending a little extra this week because you know it's always going to come back. Additionally, I feel as though a lot of people believe that their money issues are permanent. And the way that people talk, I mean, I even see the way that people comment to me and the way that they say things is that they are immediately looking at obstacles and issues and problems and they are not in any way whatsoever looking at solutions and opportunities nor are they taking opportunities to see any sort of progress a lot of people believe that whatever problem or issue that they have with money right now is here to stay but every single financial situation is fixable there is a solution to every single problem even if you are in debt you can get out of debt i am not suggesting or recommending that you get yourself into debt but I am saying that if you are in debt you can get out of it there is no one who's going to say you are going to die with your debt unless you decide that you are just not going to try to fix the problem like you won't even look at what okay what could I do here because Even the smallest solutions and the smallest amounts of progress is still progress. So even if you just took extra jobs for an extra couple shifts for an extra couple hundred dollars, you know, that is still 
making progress. That is still small solutions that become one big resolution to an issue. I talked on my TikTok about how I can weed people out on a first date and a a negative mindset around money or your career or just opportunities and all that is already one of the reasons why I can weed someone out on the first date. I would never put myself in a position to get into a relationship with someone who's having issues with their career or money and they're not seeking solutions. It's not to say that people don't of all shapes and sizes can't get into problems of course they absolutely can but I'm more or less talking about the people who don't have the mindset to find a solution like those are the type of people that I just can't vibe with nor would I subject myself to getting in a relationship with with a person like that because I have solutions to problems and I do not need to have those kind of problems in my life right like I have a good situation with money As a single independent woman, I am not going to add a partner into my life who has problems that they cannot seem to want to solve, right? I do not need those problems in my life. Anyway, all of this talk put people in an uproar, saying things like, not everyone has the privilege to be able to switch their career and not everyone and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, first of all, I'm not even talking about everyone. Like, I'm talking about my type of guy. So my type is not everyone. I have a very selective type. That's that's first of all. But second of all is like, really? Is that really what you think? Because it actually is possible if people made that decision. Like, it actually is possible. Every single human being can achieve truly whatever it is that they want if they really dedicate their mind and their life to it I mean listen to some stories of entrepreneurs who talk about how they were homeless how they were living in homeless shelters and eating at the soup kitchen and then became multi-millionaires why are you gonna find Uh, an explanation for that person oh well they were able to do that because blah 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 like I just don't see opportunity that way I believe everybody has opportunity is it all equal opportunity no of course not some people have it harder than others I'm by no means discrediting that but what what is the issue then you have to work a little bit harder I mean I literally have heard insane success stories that just required somebody working a little bit harder because they didn't have it as easy as other people girls it is time to feel good about your finances Money and Mindset with Bright and Brian, a podcast from Truist, is here to help you reshape your relationship with money. Tune in every month for inspiration and practical advice to manage your money better and live with more joy and confidence. The Money and Mindset with Bright and Brian podcast is hosted by psychologist Bright Dixon and financial wellness expert Brian Ford. Together, they explore ways to develop your money know-how and improve your well-being, covering topics like can money actually buy happiness and how to cure money anxiety. You can listen to Money and Mindset with Bright and Brian on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, or truest.com. Okay, girls, as you all know, I am big on building a community. And with a community like For the Girls, you are going to love this. Drizzly is the number one app for alcohol delivery, and you can find the biggest selection of women-owned and black-owned beer, wine, and spirits brands, and then get them delivered in under 60 minutes. And of course, this includes non-alcoholic beverages for those of you like me who prefer a mocktail. Now you can sip with purpose, find your new favorite drinks, and explore brands that are shifting in industry while supporting the diverse stories that make them great. Make your memorable moments even more meaningful by choosing brands with intention. Let's raise a glass, whether it is wine or soda, to the spirit of representation and belonging all while discovering incredible drinks with stories worth celebrating. Just download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com to start sipping with purpose. But regardless, 
I'm not even talking in that video about having to get your dream job. Like I'm not even talking about that now. I'm talking about enjoying what you do for work and finding ways to make more money because you can get a job that you enjoy and you can take on side jobs that make you more money. And then seeing some comments of people who are just so stuck in their ways and so matter-of-factly like, They would just rather be a victim. They would just rather say, well, you can do this because you have this much money. I can't do this because I don't have this much money. First things first, I only got to a financially stable and free position because of me being sick of being broke. So... I did not come up with money. I did not grow up with wealthy parents, which we'll also talk about that. I grew up regular middle America. And by the time that I was an adult and I was making money, I realized how easy it is to make nothing. I realized how easy it is to settle and just get your job out of college and be broke. And that life was just simply not for me. But that's why I was seeking opportunities and I was always seeking opportunities, whether it was finding a new job or side jobs or offering to help people for money and all different things. And that all led to me being in a position now where I am making more money. So a lot of people just have this mindset of seeing where someone is at currently and not even being interested in knowing where they were before. So that's number one. But number two I mean, do people forget that there are literally job hunters and recruiters out there that cost you nothing? I remember before I got my full-time job out of school, when I was about to graduate, I went through a staffing firm. I mean, that's not where I ended up like working. That wasn't, that wasn't the job I ended up taking. It wasn't through the staffing firm, but I went on about like five or six interviews through a staffing firm and it cost me zero dollars I only had to go into the staffing firm one time and just do kind of like an interview to tell them what my skills are what I studied and what I enjoy what kind of ideal job I would want and blah 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 and that was it so it only cost me one time to go to the staffing firm and then otherwise they had my name, my number, my email all on record and they were consistently every single week sending me new jobs and interviews that were within my area of expertise or area of interest. And yeah, I went on a bunch of different interviews. I actually remember I went on one interview that I was really hoping I was going to get, but I think I was just a little too underqualified for it because I don't think it was entry level and I was looking for entry level. But anyway, my point is, is that it can literally cost you zero dollars to start looking for more opportunities. It can cost you nothing to go to a recruiting or staffing firm, whatever you want to call it, and Tell them your situation, how much money you're looking to make, what you're looking to do, and all that good stuff. Because if you are in a position where you hate your job and you're not happy and you're not making enough money, but you're just staying there because in your head you think there's no solution to this problem, then that all leads into, again, your mindset around money. Stick to that job, obviously, in the meantime, while you're looking, but there's still, again, solutions to these problems. I didn't want to get too much into job stuff because it's not really necessarily on the exact topic that I'm talking about. But I think that that approach to your job, like settling for a situation that you hate, is because you don't believe that you are that you are deserving, honestly, of success and more money. I believe that if you genuinely feel in your heart, if you genuinely believe that you deserve financial freedom, you deserve success, you deserve more money, then yes, you are going to take opportunities to find a better situation you're not going to sit in a job that you hate you're not going to settle for barely living paycheck to paycheck if you genuinely believe that you are deserving of an abundance of success and money then no you're not going to sit around and 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 wallow in this victim mentality that like well this is just how it is there's no way out of this now no 
You can shift your perspective. You can create financial goals for yourself. You can come up with a financial plan. You can make little stepping stones into bigger milestones. You can create these goals that you are willing to achieve, but that's only going to come from having the mindset of thinking and believing and feeling like you are deserving of money and success and financial freedom. Remember what I said in the beginning. Everything is energy. So the way that you treat money or the way that you feel about your job and so on and so forth, it's like a power that you have in a sense. Like you're more powerful than you think. And that power is creating the energy which creates the reality. Like get into a quick habit of spoiling a friend or your parents or whoever. Like just send them five bucks and be like coffee on me today. That's something that I do with a lot of my friends and people I work with. Like it's something not necessarily that I started, but I adapted that habit from other people doing it. And it just makes you feel a little bit more generous. It makes you feel a little bit more abundant. It makes you feel like you have the ability to spoil people or do something thoughtful or kind for someone with money rather than feeling like, no, I can't spend this $5 or $10 like If you send someone money and say, hey, lunch on me today, it will feel so powerful. That energy will determine your reality with money and it's going to create positive, abundant habits with money. I'm not just saying spend money on everyone all the time, but just get into a a feeling of like, okay, I can do this for people without having to feel broke or guilty or a scarcity mindset or anything negative around money it's just going to build up your tolerance it's going to build up your mindset about money really and the other thing that I wanted to say when I mentioned you know my parents how I did not grow up wealthy I grew up just you know average American family the whole generational wealth and daddy's money saga that I just hear all the time I see people always talking in the comments about someone using daddy's money daddy's money daddy's money but then I also see all these people reposting quotes and memes and this and that about I didn't come from a millionaire family but a millionaire family is gonna come from me I am going to be the first billionaire in my family. I am going to create generational wealth for years to come. Oh, I am on this hustle kick because I am going to give my kids a life that I never had, blah, blah, blah. So everyone wants to become wealthy. Everyone wants to create generational wealth. Everyone wants to be able to give their kids things that they never had. Yet they're so triggered when they see young people living a lavish life and they start to say things like oh daddy's money daddy's money first of all who's even to say that that is daddy's money maybe this girl or guy whatever makes their own money works hard like you have no idea their situation so just assuming in and of itself comes from jealousy and a negative mindset but even if that's the case let's say that it is daddy's money isn't that the whole point of generational wealth Like, do you understand that the lifestyle that you're talking about that you want to build is literally what that person's parents did for them? Why are you so mad when you see that somebody else's parents created generational wealth for their kids, yet you're out here talking about, I'm going to make a million, million dollar family, whatever. I am going to give my kids everything, yada, yada, yada. Understand how contradicting and hypocritical that is and how negative it sounds. And yes, it does come from a scarcity mindset that creates jealous tendencies when you see other people having, I guess, more than you, for lack of better terms. They have more money than you or they have more material things than you, more possessions than you, whatever the case is. I know when I was younger, I used to have that jealous energy around money because my parents never got me a car. And I remember in high school, everyone's parents got them a car. I did not have a car until I was 24 years old. I shared my parents' car since I was, what, 16 when I got my permit, 17 when I got my license, and I I borrowed the car from my parents 
my whole entire time until I got my car at 24 years old. When I would see kids my own age with a BMW or a Mercedes, whatever, when I was in high school and early college, I was super jealous about it because my parents didn't do that for me. Not to say my parents didn't do other things for me. Of course they did. But there were still those times where I realized that people really had this generational wealth where their parents, whether they had businesses or investments, set themselves up to be able to spoil their kids in many ways, whether it be cars or vacations or designer things, whatever whatever the situation was. So I do remember what it was like to have a negative mindset and energy around money. But I see it even happening from grown adults now, talking about daddy's money. And you just have to understand that like, that's the whole point. You can't get mad at, at kids or young adults for having things that their parents worked hard as hell for them to be able to have and for them to be able to enjoy. Because maybe their parents didn't have that when they were kids. And now they said exactly what you're saying. Well, I didn't come from a wealthy family, but I'm going to create a wealthy family and so on and so forth. So we have to get rid of this mindset of being angry when we see people having things that their parents worked their asses off to give them. And lastly, I want to share a piece of advice that I received once, not about money. I received this word of advice about something else, but I realized that you could actually remove the word and create blanks and just kind of fill in the blanks. So it was how you perceive blank determines your reality with blank. So how you perceive money determines your reality with money. And it is that simple. If you have a good relationship with money and see it in a positive light, you will have a good positive relationship with money. If you have a bad relationship with money and see it in a negative light, you will have a bad negative relationship with money. So take that word of advice and you could apply it in anything. How you perceive blank determines your reality with blank and start to really Be conscious of the shift that you are going to make, whether it is with money or whatever else that fits the blanks perfectly for you. So that's all I have for today. Thank you all so much for listening. Until next time, girls. Five years ago, Nathan Fillion's officer John Nolan started his second act as LAPD's oldest rookie. On September 27th, the ABC Rookie Universe expands. Former guidance counselor turned FBI agent Simone Clark explodes onto the screen in this fun, high-octane action-packed spinoff. Nisi Nash Betts stars in the Rookie Fed series premiere, September 27th, 10, 9 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. Immersive technology has long been thought of as something that is primarily used by gamers and other entertainment applications. Billions of dollars have been spent on advancing the components that make up the technology, but it is still considered niche. Is it a technology that is in search of an application or just a killer app? To help me answer that question, I have with me today Mark Sage, the Executive Director of the Augmented Reality for Enterprise Alliance or AREA. Visit mauser.com slash empowering dash innovation to listen to the full episode.